Hi, everyone. Thank you, Open Source uh, Committee, for uh, Open Source Summit, for having me here today. Today, I'm going to present uh, my paper on uh, performance evaluation of uh, Apache Hadoop, Spark, and uh, Flink. Okay. Okay, so first I will start with my introduction. So I am a senior staff software engineer at Visa, Foster City, California. So I have been I have been in industry for more than 18 years. So I have a bachelor's in electrical and electronics from JNTU Hyderabad, and also I had a, a advanced security, uh, advanced computer security certificate from Stanford University, as well as. Uh, also specialization in leadership and management from Harvard Business School. Okay, uh, to start into the paper. So first I want to start with an abstract. So you know today uh, everywhere big data technologies are used. Uh, it's it's widely used in the industry. So uh, we I started uh, uh, doing research into the big data tools. Uh, uh, I, this paper is more about I have take it's an experiment I I conducted uh, taking like uh, three uh, big data tools Hadoop, Spark, and Flink, uh, and I can I'm going to share the results of, uh, of my presentation. My, sorry, my uh, re research work what I did on this paper. So this is more about performance analysis of all the three tools we took and did the test. Okay, so introduction, uh, paper introduction in the uh, era of big data, efficient data processing architectures are crucial for timely analysis of vast data sets to extract the valuable insights. So Apache Spark, Flink and Hadoop are prominent in uh, uh, for large data scale data processing today in the industry. So that's why we are steady focused on uh, uh, batch processing to evaluate their performance, aiming to shed light on the execution with the time with the large data sets so we have taken a different uh, data sets as input like uh, and then we did our our uh, experiment and finally uh, uh, we published the results so what is the method we used is gracious definition uh, uh, our study what we used is the gracious definition of systematic approach so which involves in reflection and experimentation to achieve the predefined research objectives so our research adopts a qualitative and applied approach with comparative analysis and statistical calculations to evaluate the big data tool. So this is about the method what we followed. So we we are like qualitative research allows for in-depth exploration and produces uh, illustrative information vital for understanding complex phenomena. So this is the method. And the, what, are, what are the steps we followed in our method uh, when we are doing the experimental research? So first is like problem definition, identifying the problem related to the big data processing and then theoretical foundation for that problem. So presenting the theoretical fundamentals of big data and related solutions. Next, the solution proposal, developing a solution to the problem identified. Um, implementation. So then after we came up with the problem definition and foundation solution, then uh, implementation, executing the proposed solution and providing a detailed guide. So mainly the objective is to explore the big data tools utilization so for this what we took is we took a word counter program a simple word counter program and then we started uh, analyzing the performance of the three tools uh, hadoop spark and flink so when it comes to the developmental proposal um, the objective is to explore the big data tools utilization by developing a word counter program so word counter program using the Apache Hadoop Spark and Flink. So for this, we have taken the uh, our experiment, the configuration we use the Linux environment uh, using the Ubuntu version and the RAM, 8 GB and four core processor. Also we have a three platform, all the three platforms will work in pseudo distribution mode. So what is pseudo distribution mode is yes, we using a single node, we can create a environment as like a cluster. Like a distributed cluster with a single node. So, uh, so word counter program. 
So before we start the experiment, the, first we need to prepare the test data. So for that, the program we choose is the word counter program. So the main reason we choose this program is uh, this is most suitable for uh, calculating the for the batch pro, for the batch uh, purpose. This program suits well. Um, so what we have did is we have taken this uh, uh, the file we choose is the word counter program. Uh, the input file we choose is uh, related to federal constitution made available in the PDF format. Uh, this is like 514 pages with the total size of 2.8 NB. So this is the input file we took and uh, 2.8 MB is not sufficient, right? So we need to have a bigger size of input files for the test. So we have, we have just replicated the file, the same uh, word count, uh, uh, the input size we replicated using the Linux commands, uh, just concatenated the file to get into the bigger size. So we have taken like 1 GB, 3 GB and 5 GB. So for 1 GB, we have to concatenate the file for 1000 times. Whereas coming to the 3 GB, we have to concatenate for uh, like uh, 3000 iterations and 5 GB is almost 5000 iterations. So now we got the test data ready and uh, the word count program, we just written in a Java and uh, just using the Eclipse IDE. Uh, and Maven is our uh, configuration uh, build tool is Maven. And we generated the jar in the Maven. So on the Hadoop environment, we use the system user uh, added to the Hadoop group. New user, HD user created and added to Hadoop group. SSH client installed to interact with the Hadoop via HD user using the DSA public key. So this policy allows communication between the nodes without having to enter a username and password as this type of communication between nodes is quite frequent. So uh, this is this is to make our, we are using the SSS client and the new user. The main reason of this uh, using the public is security. This is to make uh, our authentication or the security, the way we interact, make, make it easy and more secure. That's why we use this. And uh, in Hadoop, uh, we used resource manager. Uh, uh, I'm talking about the development environment. How how what we have, like uh, when we are running the process, we have resource manager, uh, data node, node manager, node uh, uh, name node, uh, secondary name node. Yeah, pseudo uh, mode uh, is what uh, we created. Uh, and uh, then when we are moving the file from Hadoop to local, we used the HDFS FS commands. And uh, Hadoop jar command used to run the jar compiled by the Maven jar with the read input file and write the result to output file. So basically what we are doing, we have written a uh, Java program on the word count and we have prepared the input uh, file uh, uh, in the Linux we concatenated and we kept the files, three files ready, 1 GB, 3 GB, 5 GB as our input for our uh, Java program. So. And then this Java program, we compiled the in Eclipse, right? We wrote the Java program, compiled into a jar, and we moved it into the environment where we have to test it. And we, on this jar, we are going to run in the Hadoop environment using the HDFS commands. And, and once we run this jar, uh, jar with the input sizes of uh, 1 GB, 3 GB, 5 GB, we are going to get the output with the results. So that's what we did in the Hadoop environment. Coming to the Spark, the same experiment we repeated in the Spark. So in the Spark, we used the AS uh, uh, platform. The file system initialization process was similar to Hadoop with only some specific configurations for the platform and for its integration with, her, with HDFS and its operation in the same pseudo distribution mode where we use the single node to create a cluster environment. With the same combinational resources we used in the Hadoop configuration. So we are trying to simulate the similar kind of environment for all the, uh, whether we take Hadoop or Spark or Flink, we're taking the similar uh, environment, we are creating similar development environment and same kind of input uh, file, input sizes of files and as well as the same program. Then only we can uh, clearly compare the performance and get the talk on the results. So. To do this, it was necessary to change the variables in the file. So when we when we are uh, Hadoop to Spark, this is what we did. We have the Spark ENV ESH in the development environment. 
and we used uh, this configuration, uh, these export commands uh, for our uh, uh, execution. And, the, uh, and we ran the job after the conf after the configuration setup, we ran the job and we used the Spark submit uh, to, to run the program. Just we have taken the input as the same uh, word count program and uh, output is going to be the, uh, we get the output after running this program in the Spark, similar to the Hadoop. The result obtained in the word frequencies as uh, was exactly same as obtained in the experiment carried out by MapReduce and the Hadoop, but with different completion times. So on different platforms. And results can be viewed in the output file. So after Hadoop and uh, Spark, then we started the same experiment in the Flink. So in this Flink, uh, Again, when it comes to the development environment, uh, we start integration with the yarn. It was necessary to run the script. And these are the commands we used where uh, uh, n is the number of nodes we want to run in our uh, yarn session. So same, we are running with the Flink commands, uh, running the input jar on the word count program, uh, and uh, we got the output into the output folder, similar to the other uh, two uh, setups we had. On the end of the execution, the same word count frequency result was generated, similar to the two platforms. So now, so so far the experiment, what we did is we uh, we have taken uh, just to give a conclusion, we have taken three uh, Apache Hadoop, uh, Spark, as well as the Flink, and we have taken one word counter program in the Java program. We compiled uh, and kept it in the we compiled and generated the jar and moved it to the relative environments. We have like three development environments: Hadoop, as well as Spark, as well as Flink. And then the three we did three experiments. We have three input sizes of files. One is with one GB data, one is with three GB data, another one is the five GB data. So three input sizes three experiments, three technologies, but every technology we repeated the test for like almost like 10 executions for each data source. So what are our final results from our experiment? Uh, uh, first, if we take the first experiment, it's first experiment, we have taken the input size of one GB data, so one GB. So in this one GB, Spark was 186% faster than Flink and 251% faster than the Hadoop. So uh, when the input size is small, Spark is performing very good compared with the Flink and Hadoop. Whereas if you take Flink and Hadoop, Flink is faster than Hadoop. So out of these three, in input size, data size is less, Spark is doing better. Next, going to the second exper second experiment, that is we taken with the somewhat bigger size, that is 3 GB. So when you take the 3 GB uh, data source, Spark surpassed both competitors. Like it's a 233% faster than Hadoop and 334% faster than the Flink. Uh, so what is the difference when we compared with first and second experiment? All, both experiments, Spark is faster. But when you see the Flink and Hadoop, Flink was faster when the on Hadoop when the input size is less. But when the input size increased, we see uh, Hadoop is faster than the Flink. So going for the third experiment with 5 GB data, we increase from 1 GB, 3 GB to 5 GB. So when you see the 5 GB data as input, so Spark is still better. It's a 197% improvement over Hadoop and 316% over the Flink. So when the data size grown, whether its input size is less or bigger, always uh, always Spark is uh, better than the uh, Flink and the Hadoop. But when it comes to uh, between Hadoop and uh, Flink, with less input size, Flink was better, but with more input size, Hadoop was doing good. So what we want to conclude is for this is for the batch processing applications spark is better than uh, flink and hadoop so that's what uh, you want to conclude uh, with this results so 
and despite the absence of parallelism so what we did is in the pseudo distributed mode it's kind of uh it's not the actual cluster you're creating the environment of actual cluster the single node even then the performance is good for the spark but if you go into the real cluster distributed environment still it's going to be more faster that's what we are concluding so as a result of this work it was possible to get a sense of demand generated by so-called big data and understand how a large scale data processing architecture works both in batch and real time even if it is later has not been explored in practice so this is what we conclude out of these three and these are the references and we also use the generative ai in our uh, development using the uh, which helps us in writing the code faster and we integrated our our ids with github copilot also we used uh, plant uml integrated with the intellij uh, with the, the tools whether it's eclipse or intellij to the, draw the and diagrams or design diagrams uh yeah and i want to share the actual paper also what i have just bear with me uh, 